Hello, beginners of billiards. I'm Chum Pilkyu. The manager of the neighbor. Cafe Sarai Billiard Academy. In order to help you beginners, I've put together an easy billiard theory and posted it online, but I know many of you found it difficult with terms and such. I'd like to make the Easy Billiard series. I've posted online. Easier to understand the key to this theory is topic. not the thickness, but the aiming point, and the topic is aiming point billiards. The subject is the direct hitting of four ball billiards. In order to score, you need to set the parameters or elements as follows. First, you need to find your target point. Where the cue line should go through the then first the impact ball. point of cue ball. You need to set your upper and lower part of impact point and the number of tips. A aiming point is a point in the first object ball. And it's the closest point to the second object ball. And that would be the point where the cue line would go through. In this picture, the aiming point would be the light green point here. when hitting the first ball with a cue ball and then hitting the second ball. The aiming point is the point where the line connecting the two balls intersects the equator when viewed from the plane of the ball. This point is the closest to this ball it will come into contact at if this point. If you come along the line, in this image. You have the cube ball, the central red ball, the first object ball, and the remaining numbers 1 the through assumptions 7 of the second object balls. Aiming points are single points of the first object T ball. And these points are closest to each second object ball. So right now, if it's number one, it's as close as I can get. If it's number four, I'm going to run number four along this line and it's going to make contact right here. If it's six, it'll be this point. This line connecting the two balls and the intersection with the equator in the first They'll object They'll come into ball. contact at the convex equator. You can think of it as an aiming point. In the previous picture, numbers 1 through 7 were second object balls. But now we're assuming they are cue balls. Even though the cue balls are in different locations, if the first and second object balls are in this situation, aiming point is only one. Let's look at the lime green target point again. This is the lime green target point right here. First, this is the one point on the first object ball. One point on the first object ball. Secondly, the closest point to the second object ball. This point is the closest point to the second object ball. 
it's the intersection of the two balls pivotal junction with the equator. The center point of the two balls, which is the core of the Earth, is the intersection of the center line with the first object ball, which is intersecting with the equator. This pivotal junction line and intersection with the equator. In other words, the second object ball follows the line to the first object ball. When you approach it, the point of contact between the two balls. When you approach the ball along the line, in other words, here. this point is the closest to the second object ball. As you can see in the picture, the aiming point is the relationship between first and second object ball, not the cube ball, ball regardless of, of the seven. position. Aiming point on the first object ball has only one aiming point. If it's number one, it'll be pushing right since numbers four to five. 6 and 7 have to be dragged or drawn. I will give them the bottom or lower part, so you can only change the point of play to hit the second object ball. So that's the conclusion, we'll look at it more closely later. We'll look at how you set the upper part or lower part of play on cue ball. If the cue ball and first object ball are fixed, and the second object balls are placed around them like this. The angle of the object ball will determine whether to give the upper or lower part of the cue ball. It says cue ball, first object ball, except for the rest of second balls, object everything balls. else is assumed to be the second object This ball. line green line is where you need to hit the first ball with the cue ball and pull it. Less acute angles, including 90 degrees. If it's acute angles, you have to drag it. Since the ball hits and you have to move backwards, let's make the bottom the target point. The bottom indicates 6 o'clock and the top part of the yellow-green ball is at an angle of over 90 degrees after hitting the ball, so it's the obtuse on angle the obtuse part. part. The cue ball has to push the first object ball. Since we have to move forward, we have to hit the top of the ball. The top part is 12 o'clock. Direct hitting in the Korean 4-ball system is not done with a cushion. Direct hitting is done at 6 o'clock or 12 o'clock direction. It's better not to give a left-sided or right-sided spin because the aiming point changes. It's more difficult. Even in the same clockwise direction, the angle of bending varies depending on the number of tips. Let me explain the number of tips. First, if you look at the layout of these balls. There's the cue ball and the first object ball. I'll fix these two balls and pretend that everything around them is second object balls. When you drag and push like this. Let's examine when you give two tips, or when you give three tips. If I cut this horizontally, and cut it north and south, it would be north, south, east, or west by a line or a dot conceptually. North, south, east, west. But if you look at zones, even if you divide the same 360 degrees into four, cut them diagonally. 
this would be the east zone, the west the zone, the south zone, and the north zone. If you divide the total 360 degrees into four diagonal sections, north, south, east, and west by 90 degrees, it's three tips for north and south, two tips for east and west, and three tips for north and south. As you get closer to the polar zones, you must have a strong push or pull force. So it's logical to think of it as using three tips. Just like the magnet, north and south are strong magnetic. It's best to think of it as a three tip tip because north and south are the two areas that require the most powerful drives. Here's how tips work. First, let's take a look at this chart. The diameter of a three cushion ball is 61.5 millimeters. The tip is at the end of the queue. Its diameter is 12 millimeters. One tip is usually six millimeters. That's not 12 millimeters, that's the radius. Every time you change a tip. It forms an Depending angle of 15 on whether degrees. you give two or three tips. It usually changes 15 degrees when you drag it. If you put this tip right in the center, it would look like this. It's right in the center, so there's no rotation at all. That's zero tip. And the radius of the circle is right in the it's center. This circle. It's a half dip. If it exceeds the radius of six millimeters, it becomes two tip. If it exceeds six millimeters, it becomes a circle because it's in the middle. It becomes a circle and it becomes three tip. So if your one tip is not six millimeters, but 12 millimeters, three tips is 36 millimeters. So based on the radius, the radius is 30.75. If you give it three tips, it's 36 millimeters, so it'll hit the air. In this case, you'll need to add 0 0.5 tips, 1.5 tips, and you should add a to decimal point To get rid of the decimal like point. The radius should be one tip. To hit directly in the four ball billiards ustum. The hitting point numbers we will be using are as follows. In case of push, the upward target point is 0 tip, 1 tip, 2 tip, 3 tip. In case of pulling or drawing, the downward target two point tip, is 0 three tip, 1 tip. To get a direct hit. It is more accurate to not give left or right spin. Let's summarize what we've learned so far. As you can see, these balls are a cue ball and the first object ball. Two fixed and then like second this, object with a light balls green line around it. it. And then the bottom area is the drag zone. So the bottom area of the cue ball is six o'clock. And the top part of the yellow green area is the area that gets pushed out. So use the top part of the cue ball
don't think of the north, south, east, and west as lines as the or area. Dots. If you cut the north, east, and west in diagonal lines, you get the east, west, south, north area. Think of it as three tips for the south, the north. the polar regions, and two tips for the rest, the east and west. Now, let's aggregate the aiming point, the upper and lower points, and the number of tips. The aiming point, in this case, number one. When you hit the first object ball with a cue ball, when you hit number one, the aiming point is here. This is the closest point to this number one ball. In case four, if you stick this ball along the line, it will touch here. This point will be the aiming point. In case six, the yellow dot here would be the target point. The next top and bottom are when the cue ball and the first object ball are in this arrangement. Cut it horizontally and divide it into north and south. Since it corresponds to the drag from 90 degrees, 4, 5. 6 and 7 hit the bottom. It's about aiming at the bottom of the ball and making it spin counterclockwise to make it drag. Numbers 1, which two, correspond three are to an obtuse side of this ball. They're north of this ball, therefore, 1, 2 should give the three. upper point so that they can move forward. If you look at the tip, if you cut the whole thing diagonally in the east, west, south, and north. This side is east, west, south, and north. Numbers 1 and 2 represent the north. 1 numbers. and 2 represent the north. Numbers 6 and 7 represent the south. Within 45 degrees of this the area, line. within 45 degrees of this line is the polar region. In this case, three tips. And three, four, so you five only need to area. give two tips to this area. Based on this theory, let's think about how to match numbers one to seven. Target or aiming points are these yellow points closest to the second object ball. Let's look at the upper and lower points and the tip number, excluding the aiming point. Number 1 is 3 tip, 2 is also north. So upper 3 tip, 3 is also upper east. So tip 2 from number 4 is drag zone. So lower 2 tip. This also east, so lower 2 tip. 6 is south. So lower 3 tip, 7 is also south. So that's the bottom 3 tips. Let's take a look at the demonstration. I will hit the number one ball which is tilted 22.5 degrees from the queue line. The aiming point is the closest to the second object ball. Push the top three tips at 12 o'clock. Two. Three. 
The Theory of a New Point Billiards is, in theory, 100% probability. Because it's based on an aiming point, not a thickness. But to increase the chances of success, there are prerequisites. First of all, the shot has to go straight out. It can't be crooked, right? Secondly, even if it is the same push and pull, it is proportional to the quality of the shot. Next time, we will look at the pull and that push beginners moves. find difficult. First, we're going to look at the posts in the cafe about drawing shot. This is the theory of drawing, which plays a large part in the game of football. There is a source. 1. Choke up. 2. Aim low on the cue ball. 3. Keep the cue as level as possible. 4. Use the proper bridge length. 5. Keep your grip relaxed. 6. Use a comfortable and stable bridge. 7. Keep your elbows still into the ball. The moment you finish playing the cue ball, the upper arm often comes down 8. Go back slowly. Accelerate forward smoothly. 9. Follow through and stay down. There's a picture at the bottom. There is the video related to this and related literature. Look at the pose. At this address when you have time. As for pushing, you can find it on post 1622. It's the most probable and utilitarian way of aiming for the this thickness image of a push stroke. how to look at this invisible spot. 
behind the first object ball. Please read it when you have time. Let's look at the actual video. The short distance pushing, this time the long distance pushing. There's reference material at the bottom. Make sure you take a good look at this part in particular. And this is also good. Reference for pushing. What you've seen so far. Can be seen as a summary of the planning series, The Easiest Billiards. Which is already on the internet. If you would like to see detailed information about the aiming point you billiards. can watch the easiest billiards planning series on YouTube or Neighbor As TV. you can see from the title, it is written like a paper. There is a general overview and logical, practical and empirical examples. What theory is it based on? And here you can see what theories you need to supplement to become more advanced to billiards watch player. Easy billiards videos. You can easily access it by searching for Easy Billiards on YouTube or Google or Easy Billiards planning series on Naver. They're in order from No. 1 to No. 5. So please watch them in order. I'll search the special series about Dilliards on Nava. If you type in Easy Billiards, you'll see a video at the bottom. If you look at more videos, 10 related videos are searched on Nava TV and YouTube. I'm going to Google those. On the first screen, you'll see video number Please view one. video numbers 1 through 5 in order. That concludes my commentary on aiming billiards. Thank you for watching.